you just joined us on the system after dark. This is a homegrown number, courtesy of E3 and Cracker. Bula, how's it going? I'm D, your host on the system after dark, right here on Today FM. Today is hit music. You can catch me weeknights at 7 p.m. That's from Monday to Friday, only on the home of today's hit music. And don't forget, that's D with you every weeknight on the system after dark. In this bulletin, Sidelpa backbencher Ratu Viliame Tangive Tawa has passed away. 18 more Fijians off to New Zealand as fruit pickers. And new recruits pass out as fully fledged troops for the RFMF. Good evening, I'm Jackie Spate, and this is FBC News. Sadelpa backbencher Ratu Viliame Tangiveitawa has passed away. He died at the Mboa Hospital yesterday after a short illness where he was admitted since Wednesday. Sadelpa leader Rote Mumukepa confirms they are yet to receive news of the death in the traditional Itauke manner. However, preparations are being made for the party to present their rengu rengu. Tangive Tawa's seat in Parliament now becomes vacant and, under the Constitution, will be filled by another candidate from the same party who is ranked with the highest number of votes. Electoral Commission Chairman Chen Ban Yang is out of the country and the other members could not be reached for a comment. The remaining 18 Fijians of the Pilot 30 for the recognised Seasonal Employer Workers Scheme are expected to leave for New Zealand by the end of the month. Employment Minister Chiochi Kunrote says, while final arrangements have been made, initial reports from the New Zealand government on the current group of workers there have been nothing but positive. Maggie Boyle reports. Fiji's inclusion in the recognised seasonal employer worker scheme is now a reality in progress. With 30 places earmarked and 12 already filled, the remaining 18 are scheduled to depart our shores soon. We're in the final stages of um, getting them deployed. Um, hopefully the employers will confirm the name and once we have the travel arrangements confirmed, they will be uh, flying down to New Zealand in, um, in the next week or so, I hope. Conrote says the first 12 Fijians who left for New Zealand last month have received rave reviews. We heard from uh, the New Zealand government and the employers and the reports have been very good about uh, the way the, uh, the first 12 have settled in and how they have um, gone about their work in a very professional and um, you know um, in a manner which um, makes us uh, happy and proud of the fact that they're doing well. And while the scheme seems to be going Fiji's way, Konote says expanding their resource pool of potential employees is now being considered. Initially we are targeting the rural community. We're getting questions about uh, the program being extended to our urban uh, unemployed, but as you know, uh, we're targeting the rural youth initially, and hopefully uh, if we can send more people down, to Australia and New Zealand now will extend the program to our urban uh, unemployment. Fiji's inclusion in the scheme comes off the back of New Zealand increasing its seasonal workers quota from 6,000 to 9,000 people in 2014. The work varying from fruit pickers to processors and are all within the agriculture sector. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. The Reserve Bank of Fiji is warning people against investing with EcoVexco Investment Group, a company that has been advertising through the local papers. The RBF says any company inviting people to contribute money must have approval from the Reserve Bank of Fiji, which EcoVexco Investment Group doesn't. The RBF adds there are strong indications that EcoVexco Investment Group is fraudulent since it promises returns of up to 15 times. The Australian Securities and Investment Commission has confirmed EcoVexco is not registered with them. Governor Barry Whiteside says people must inquire on the credibility of those behind such schemes first. Fiji has adopted a green growth framework for environmentally sustainable development strategies. Finance Ministry Deputy Secretary Strategic Planning Krishna Prasad says the government has also put in place measures to help finance rehabilitation in the aftermath of a disaster. Ellen Stahls reports. 
Speaking to participants from five Pacific countries, Krishna Prasad says Fiji has put aside money to mitigate disaster risk. Also allocated annually towards the disaster risk and climate change mitigation project. These monies are used for relocation of communities that have been affected by disasters. Additional funding has also been set aside to support maintenance of flood warning, early warning systems and allocation of construction for construction of seawalls and in small islands that need it. This workshop is about disaster, risk, finance and insurance. Prasad adds that one of the main areas in the green growth framework is building resilience in climate change and disasters. In the last 23 years, natural disasters have cost the country $1.2 billion. Cyclone Evan was one of the worst hit with the bill of $220 million in damaged infrastructure and households. The t catastrophe risk insurance pilot has been continued this season through the leadership by the World Bank with the support from SBC and insurance premium support from the government of Japan. The workshop, organized by the Secretariat of the Pacific Community and the World Bank, was attended by participants from Pacific Island countries, namely Cook Islands, Marshall Islands, Samoa, Tonga, and Vanuatu. Ellen Stalls, FBC News. In the news ahead, thousands celebrate Holly, the Festival of Colors. Great words there from Lucky Dube and Babana. I hope you enjoyed that number. Different colors just for you on Gold FM. Only the classic hits. Louise with you on the center show. Well, thank you so much for the sweet company. This is Alana Miles, one of my favorites, and Black Velvet for you. Hi there. Join me on the center show every weekday from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. for the best sounds on Gold FM. Only the classic hits. Welcome back. This is FBC News. International Women's Day celebrations were held around the country today. Although it's officially marked on the 8th of March, many businesses and organizations decided to celebrate a bit early. Chanel Sivan reports. President Ratui Pelinela Tikau celebrated International Women's Day at Government House with representatives from Medical Services Pacific and Aspire Network who are fundraising for programs to end violence against women and girls. Ratui Pele gave an assurance that the government is behind such a worthy cause. The women are selling homemade candles, cupcakes and ribbons. In another part of Suva, women in business also hosted a lunch to celebrate. But it wasn't just having a meal together. The event allowed businesswomen to network and look at ways to grow their business. To the women I say celebrate your position and uh, appreciate yourself, appreciate yourself and what you do in life because everything you do is important. Every occupation that a woman has is as important as anything else. And to the men, I want to say, well, men, you need to support, you need to provide the partnership, you need to provide the necessary support structure for these women to go out and do things that they, uh, so they can better themselves and do even better. There was a presentation on how to be productive in the business world through partnership with other female colleagues. A lot can be achieved if women work together. So getting financial freedom for women, we are saying make it happen. We are saying uh, getting more women in senior management, um, executive roles in organizations they work for, we can make it happen. And uh, also increasing the number of businesses that are run and owned by women, making it happen. At Broadcasting House, the head office for Fiji Broadcasting Corporation, put up a spread for female staff. Chief Executive Ria Sayat Kayum thanked them for their efforts in making FBC a premier broadcasting corporation. On a more personal note, our male counterparts in the FBC newsroom surprised the female reporters and presenters with morning tea. The National Federation Party and the Social Democratic Liberal Party have also issued their best wishes for International Women's Day. The theme for this year's International Women's Day is Make It Happen. Shanal Shivan, FBC News. With close to 64% of women in Fiji subjected to domestic violence, the statistics should be a concern, especially for a small country in the Pacific. Akusita Thale reports Minister for Women Rosie Akbar is calling on men to join and help fight the growing problem. 
Domestic violence is a crime and should not be tolerated in any home and the community. Minister Rosie Akbar says men must realize that more women are facing violence in their homes. We need more men to step up and say, look, it is not right that women be subjected to domestic violence. So that is um, a strength for us as we have more males coming on board to assist us. Statistics released by the Fiji Women's Crisis Center reveal that two of every three Fijian women are subjected to physical and or sexual violence. The findings of the National Survey in 2013 reveal Fiji's rates of violence against women and girls are among the highest in the world. Every day, 43 women are injured, one is permanently disabled and 71 lose consciousness. While empowering women is the goal for the ministry this year, Akbar says men need to step up to their roles as providers, givers and role models to the society. We definitely will step up, up, uh, step up our operations to ensure that we are able to change the mindset of those that inflict you know, pain on the vulnerable of the community. The ministry is working with an interagency task force which includes stakeholders such as the Fiji Police Force and non-government organizations to address violence against women and children. Akusita Talei, FBC News. A pass-out parade has been held for 200 military personnel. What the Sony Raikondroka reports, the young men and women now join the territorial forces. The new troops were out in their best this morning, appearing before military commander Brigadier General Moses Siti Kuitonga. We will march our today as proud soldiers. We will be ready to serve our country. In people and citizens. The parade was held at the first training group in Nasinu, attended by family and friends of the soldiers. The RFMF commander reminded his newest troops that they are a part of a well-known family around the world. Remember, you are now part of a service renowned all over the world for its talented servicemen and women who have raised different battlefields of the past four wars and peacekeeping operations in volatile areas of the world. Tikuitonga thanked the parents and guardians for their support and urged them to continue to support their sons and daughters whilst on duties overseas. Our mission will set them to our own to further our national pride and protect our beloved way of Your support will be accepted. The RFMF will deploy these men and women into the territorial forces and regular forces, meaning they join active duty at their various military bases around Fiji. What's on your FBC News. More than 500 people gathered at the Nasesia grounds in Suva to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the Pacific Theological College. Principal <laughs> Reverend Professor Dr. Feleteritia Nokise says the school looks forward to a new era with the aim of academic excellence in theology studies, not only in the Pacific but all over the world. Ex-students and staff were part of the momentous event. President Ratue Peli Nailatika was the guest speaker and has urged church leaders in the Pacific to work together. Talks are also underway to turn the school into a university. Hindus around Fiji today celebrate Holi, the festival of colors, a time to share love, sorrows and joy, a time to set aside differences and be together as a family, a nation and a people. Savarat Tambor gets into the spirit of Holi. <laughs> Holi is an annual event for Hindus. People move from house to house singing folk songs and playing with colored powder as a sign of celebration and merrymaking. The color reflects that you blend into one color and forget about your enmity or the past grievances. You enjoy. This is a festival of enjoyment and we must enjoy it to the fullest extent. This is the Sri Sanatam Dharam Prakash Ramayan Vishnu in Nandera, Nasinu. Similar celebrations are playing out in communities all over Fiji and the world. Holi is the festival of colors or the festival of love. Celebrations began last night where devotees, bonfires or holika. This signifies the destruction of evil and triumph prevails. Celebration will continue with feasting and the throwing of colors. And here's proof that there are no barriers in Fiji, be it race or religion. We are one people. Semi Vuki lives in the west, but he traveled across the island to celebrate with his friends. We came all the way from Lotoka to Suba. Since we are called Fijian as a whole, 
My friend Mr. Muni says he's overwhelmed with the decision made by government, so he said for us to come and celebrate here in Nandera. And it's not just the locals getting into the swing of things. Expats got a taste of holy as well. It's my first time to join this holy festival. Yeah, they are very good musicians. It felt like um, I was recognizing so many cultures all in one place, almost like how New York City has people from around the world. Fiji is the same way. The celebration of Holi is recounted in Hindu sacred texts and stories that have passed from generation to generation, telling the tale of good defeating evil. Sawira Tambua, FBC News. Sports Now, here's Jamie with the latest. Thank you, Zaki, and good evening. Coming up, the latest results from day one of the Fiji Betamara Sevens and Junior Japan arrives for start of Pacific Rugby Challenge. We'll have this and more after the break. Welcome back to FBC Sports. Discipline was a major worry on day one of the Fiji Betamara Sevens. National Sevens coach Ben Ryan was alarmed at the high number of cards issued due to illegal tackles and infringements. Ryan says players will need to improve their discipline if they wish to make it into the international arena. Tzale Ndadakdaka has more. The Sinbin, or Naughty Boys chair, was kept busy throughout day one of the Fiji Bitter Mari Sevens. The match between Tambandamu and Delasui alone saw five cards flashed for ill discipline. Perhaps I'm still really disappointed with uh, high tackles. I mean, you know, it's like being in a card shop at the moment. It's been one yellow card after another. Like, very few technical tackles that are low and complete with your arms. Um, and we really need to sort this out because it's going to have a big impact on, on the future games at international level. Ryan says winning the prestigious title will come down to fitness, maintaining possession and decision making. He says it's all about how the teams adapt as the winning team will have to play a total of eight games to claim the title. A lot of teams here are, are overcrowding the breakdown and I'm looking up and there's space everywhere and three or four players from defence in the breakdowns and if they lose those then you're stuffed. So I think decision making at breakdown will be key next, uh, next few games for those top teams. But uh, no, it's high quality isn't it, as always. So it gives me, um, I wouldn't say headaches because I'm pretty sure about where the squad is going at the moment but um, there's certainly a couple of spots up for grabs. Ryan will name an 18-member squad on Sunday to prepare for the Hong Kong and Tokyo Sevens tournaments at the end of the month. Based on what was seen today, Ryan will sure keep discipline on top of his agenda when selecting his side. Talent Dothakadak, FBC Sports. Meanwhile, organizers of the Fiji Betamara Sevens are so far happy with proceedings on day one. Games have run on time with minimal mistakes and officials are hoping this will carry on to the final day tomorrow. Basically, things are running smoothly. Uh, the Fiji Bitter Mara 7, the 39 Fiji Mara 7 kicked off to a great start this morning on time, as planned. Uh, we went live on TV and all games went according to the schedule. Uh, basically, most all the teams came in pretty early this morning as well. Uh, the manager's briefing that we had uh, at Leopard Hall ca carried very clear instructions that all managers and players report to the village, Games Village. The only disappointment was Mara Samoa not, turn not turning up and officials are lamenting the loss because their spot could have been taken up by one of the many local teams that were turned away. The Junior Japan team aims to be consistent with a strong performance in the Pacific Rugby Challenge starting next week in Suva. The team arrived at the Nandi International Airport today. Team coach Ryuji Nakatake says the majority of his players are current university and high school students in Japan. Uh, the other team, Canada and uh, Fiji and Tonga, is uh, bigger than us. So I, I expect that uh, there is a big uh, uh, pressure and then I would like them to learn the, under the pressure how to uh, beat them and how to 
uh, make a self-confidence. That is the, one of the target of the, this tour. The team plays Canada at 1 p.m. on Tuesday at the NZ Stadium in Suva. The Suva volleyball teams are on track to lift both the men's and women's division titles in the Vanua Cup Challenge tomorrow. A total of 16 teams in the men's and 12 in the women's division from around the country are competing for the top prize in volleyball. The Suva officials are happy with the results so far and are confident of taking home both titles tomorrow. Things look great uh, for tomorrow uh, for, for, for the 2DFM team, for the Suva. Uh, 2DFM has been the campaign team for, for Suva, but uh, for the other two men's team, it's just back to the drawing board today and uh, to, to plan it out what's for, for the finals tomorrow. But our, our women's team, they've been doing great. Unfortunately, we had to had uh, only our main team had to have the services of eight players, because most of them uh, were in their workplace today, uh, were not released. So, yeah, they're looking good also. The finals of the Vanua Cup will be played tomorrow at the FMF Gymnasium in Suva. The Fiji Car Club annual car show will be held this weekend. The event gives an opportunity to car owners to showcase their models and modifications of various types of motor vehicles. The event is expected to attract a large number of participants. We expect there to be a um, big crowd. Uh, to come and uh, support us in our endeavor to promote motorsports in Fiji. Um, we also uh, are expecting a lot of participants. Uh, last car show we had a total of 22 participants. As you can see from uh, the cars behind us, this, these are just uh, some of the participants which, we are, uh, which will be coming down. The car show will be held at the Handicraft Center car park in Suva on Sunday. Something definitely going to see. That's it from Sports Tonight. I'll be back again on Monday. Until then, have yourselves a safe weekend and good evening. One of the leading hotel operators in Asia Pacific, Acor, is growing its Fijian hotel network with the addition of multi-million dollar Pullman Nandi Bay Resort and Spa. The project is being developed by the Goko Group of Companies. Shireen Lanta reports the resort will be Goko Group's first upscale hotel. Located along the beachfront on Nandi Bay, developers say the resort will offer a premier location just two kilometers from the Nandi International Airport. The current resort development represents a single largest venture for the Goku Group uh, with a development value of, of 70 million Fijian dollars. Our primary financiers, the Fiji Development Bank and HSC Bank, are local banks. Currently under construction, the new Pullman project is a strategic opportunity to drive economic growth. Once completed, it will employ 300 staff. We feel that the opening and a property like this, the Pullman, Nandi Bay, won't just be adding employment, but it'll actually be really good for tourism, revenue growth and some really great economic benefit for the country. The resort will have 234 rooms and offer guests an extensive range of facilities, including six restaurants and bars, two swimming pools and a day spa. This development is another example of the Fijian government's vision of providing high quality service and targeting the high yielding tourist markets. As well, as, as you all know, the tourism industry today is the largest contributor to the Fijian economy. In 2014, the industry contributed 33% of the GDP. The five-star Pullman Resort is expected to open in 2016. Sharin Lata, FBC News. Fine apart from a few showers was experienced over the eastern parts of the larger islands, isolated afternoon showers and thunderstorms was experienced elsewhere. Temperatures were fairly even across the group, 32 degrees in most centres, while Mbasa notched one extra at 33 degrees. Fine conditions in the morning tomorrow with afternoon or evening thunderstorms in most places. Brief showers over the interior and eastern parts of the larger islands, elsewhere afternoon or evening showers and thunderstorms, easterly winds 10 to 15 knots, moderate seas. And the main points again, Sadalpa backbencher Ratu Viliame Tangive Tawa has passed away after a short illness. 18 more Fijians have been identified for the seasonal worker scheme with New Zealand. 
and Fijians come together to celebrate Holly, the Festival of Colours. To this week's poll question, we're asking, is Fiji progressing well in women's empowerment? Visit our FBC website to take part. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj or share with us via Facebook page FBC News. And if you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. That's our bulletin for today. Join the team again tomorrow. I'll see you next week. Have a safe and enjoyable weekend. Ni modamanda.